if you're tuning in, we're starting uh, the Internet Predators event with Opal Singleton. Hopefully we'll get started soon, so hang in there. Good evening, everyone. 
I'm Randy Hutz. I'm the mayor of the city of Big Bear Lake, and I want to welcome you uh, to tonight's uh, event. And I, I want to thank you for showing up and for uh, supporting our community and supporting our kids, our grandkids, our neighbors, and uh, frankly, for paying attention. Um, I want to uh, remind you that uh, tonight this event is being live streamed uh, courtesy of the Breakthrough Task Force. There's information on the back of your program uh, where you can also go and watch it uh, afterwards. And uh, in order to maximize the time with our very uh, special guest speaker, uh, we're going to dispense with the uh, normal recognition of VIPs uh, with two exceptions. Uh, one is that I uh, want to uh, introduce Sergeant Michael O'Brien from the San Bernardino County Traffic and Task Force and his team. Sergeant O'Brien has worked with the Big Bear Valley uh, for many years and is a primary investigator dealing with uh, crimes against children. Uh, so thank you for making the trip up the hill. Uh, also, I would like to uh, introduce um, our very own Assemblyman Jay Obernolte, uh, who will then uh, introduce uh, our special speaker. Well, thank you, Randy. It is a real honor for me to be here with you tonight, and I'll tell you why this issue is so important to me, because like many of you, I have raised children here in Big Bear. The last 20 years, I've raised my two sons here. And uh, crime is of paramount importance to me as a parent. Most places in the United States, crime, especially violent crime, has been either level or in decline the last couple of years. But that is not the case here in California. In 2017, according to the Department of Justice, crime was up 2%. The year before that, crime was up in California 4%. And the year before that, crime was up here in California by over 8%. And that is a really alarming statistic for me. And if you look at the reasons for this crime increase, it's very clear why it's occurring. We had about 10 years ago a bill that passed the legislature called AB 109 that realigned the incarceration of low-level criminals in California and shifted responsibility from the state to local counties and cities. And along with that was supposed to be a shift of funding, which never materialized. So you can imagine that there wasn't enough jail space to accommodate these criminals, and they started to get released. So that was the beginning of the problem. And then in 2014, there was a voter initiative called Prop 47 that uh, reduced the penalties for many drug-related crimes and set a cap of $950 for property crimes below which anything, any theft or larceny was considered a misdemeanor and it was retroactive. So if you had already been charged with a felony for stealing something under that amount, you could apply to the court and get your sentence retroactively reduced. And then in 2016, there was a voter initiative called Prop 57 that reclassified a lot of the crimes for the purposes of parole into the nonviolent category. And that re resulted in early parole for a lot of criminals here in California. And of particularly importance to the topic that we're, we're discussing tonight is the fact that Prop 57 reclassified a lot of sex crimes as nonviolent. And I don't know about you, but when someone commits a sex crime against one of my children, I consider that violent. That is a violent crime, it is not a nonviolent crime. So that is why this is such an important topic for us as residents of California and Big Bear, but especially us as parents tonight. So I would like to introduce a very special woman uh, Opal Singleton, she is a part-time employee for the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, but more importantly, she is the outreach coordinator for the Riverside County Anti-Human Trafficking Association. Uh, she also has done campaigning and fundraising against these propositions that I've been speaking to you about, and most importantly, she meets with children who have been the victims of internet and sex trafficking crimes, and so she has a lot of first-hand information about how we can keep our children safe. So please give a big, warm, big bear welcome to Opal Singleton. Thank you, Randy. Thank 
It says it's green, so I guess it's on. Okay, did anybody ever mention that you all live in paradise? <laughs> I live in Riverside, California. Hello. <laughs> when they uh, said you want to come up here, I, I kept putting it off and putting it off. You know, it seemed like it was out of the way, and I was driving up today, and I thought, what the heck was I thinking? This is good stuff up here. So thank you for inviting me. Uh, I want to really get going tonight because I have a lot to share with you. I know from all the speaking that I do, people always say the number one comment is, I'm a bit overwhelmed or I'm really overwhelmed. You will be overwhelmed, trust me, it's okay. Just accept it and kind of store it away. The kinds of things I'm gonna share with you tonight are the kinds of things that will kind of go to the back of your brain and then one day you'll go, oh, that's what that woman was talking about. And so that's okay. Just let me kind of pour it out there and then you can take it in. So I, first of all, I retired. People say, how did you get into this? Well, I retired in 2000. I actually had a home up in Lake Arrowhead at that point. And uh, I did eight, day, eight years of the RV thing and the cruise thing, and I became an artist, and I highly recommend it, by the way. I don't know how I screwed that up, but here we go. In 2008, I began to go to a church with my husband that had a mission in Cambodia, and I had become a glass artist. I began to sell my glass and uh, go to Cambodia. And I've been there many, many times now. I was actually the acting country director of the largest safe house in Cambodia. And the FBI actually sends many people over to Cambodia to do training there on sex trafficking. In 2010, we began to see human trafficking in Moreno Valley, and that was the beginning of the Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force for Riverside County. It was started by a young man named Aaron Wolf, and I give him credit because he was one of 5,000 sheriff deputies. Anybody in the Riverside County Sheriff Department or other police departments could have done this, but he did it. And what he did is he went to Sacramento and he got enough money to start a task force. And I met him right after that, and he told me I'm the only other person he had ever met that knew that trafficking had a K in it. And so that made me qualify. And he met me and he said, would you be my training and outreach coordinator? This is 2010. And I said, sure, I'll do that. He didn't know me from Adam. He said, but you have to raise all your own money, pay all your own way. I'm like, well, yeah, this is my kind of retirement. <laughs> so I sat at my kitchen table and he went undercover. That was a heck of a relationship. And I think he thought I'd quit, but I didn't. Because once you've ever sat with a parent of a missing child, or sat with a child who has been violated, you can never look back in this business. And it has been eight years now. Since I've done that, I've now trained a quarter of a million people eye to eye. I always kind of think, who in the heck is that woman, and how did that happen? Only I see the pictures, I always kid that I actually used to look like the person on the back of this book, okay? But it is worth it to do that, so I want to share with you. So I wear many hats, I actually have eight jobs, I seem like I'm a little unstable some days. Anyway, but I operate the Million Kids uh, nonprofit. And this is tonight uh, being brought to you by Million Kids. It's called Million Kids because more than a million kids are trafficked each year throughout the world. I always say we're not one million and we're not eight million, we're just a million kids. The most important thing you can do, and you can do it while I'm talking, I don't care, is follow us on Facebook. Now, I am not a fan of Facebook. If you want to follow me, good luck. I don't care what kind of ice cream my kids are eating. You know, I'm not on there. But I follow me and kids on Facebook because we post new cases every three or four hours on there. And it's all about the latest apps that are being on there. We're going to talk about the one that really worries me the most in the second half today, and that is TikTok. We talk about gangs and how this works. We talk about labor trafficking. We talk about all kinds of trafficking and how it takes place. And you can see these cases at meandkids.org. I have three jobs at USC. I'm very, very privileged. I was blown away when they called me in there. But I train law enforcement for the whole state of California. I am a post-certified law enforcement instructor. And I actually travel across the United States. I just came back from Boise and the next to Kansas where I train law enforcement. I also served on the panel that wrote the curriculum for all of law enforcement for the state of California for post. And I am also an instructor for LAPD 
for the uh, de-escalating human violence, human, excuse me, de-escalating violence and human trafficking. I'm an instructor at LA Fire Training Academy where we train fire department, port authority, uh, police, uh, excuse me, um, departments of housing and code authority. I am the statewide trainer for code enforcement and they're a very critical part of this fight. I have my own radio show, kind of blows me away. If you're going down the hill, and uh, on a Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock on AM 590, the answer, you can listen to my radio show. And I appreciate each and every one of you that do that. I'm so much uh, glad to hear that San Bernardino Task Force is here. I work with the Riverside County Task Force, and we all must work together. They may start in Marino Valley and go over to Colton, or they may start on Baseline and they'll end up over on Ontario or down in Corona. And so we try to support each other. So whenever they have a case, I announce it. We just had, uh, I think it's Lieutenant uh, Kim Hernandez on, and I was able to work together with you over at Rancho Cucamonga. Follow us at three o'clock on Saturday. Why do I do this? I want our public to understand several things. Number one, do you guys have any idea how privileged you are to have two human trafficking task forces in the Inland Empire? That is just amazing. There are only 41 federally funded task forces, and we are one of them in this case. But we work all back and forth together. Why do I say that? These men who are kind enough to drive up the hill and be with you tonight are men who put their lives on the line. I believe that the most the worst kind of crime is when you violate a child. But when you start selling each other's bodies, it doesn't get any worse than that. And when that body's a child body, then it's going to take all of our resources. And these are people, I'm going to tell you, pimps and people in commercial sex don't work nine to five. When you're home having Thanksgiving, they're listening to some jailhouse call. They're going undercover. They're putting their own lives on the line. And I'm about to show you that the people who are in this are some nasty piece of business. And so I'm very, very grateful because these cases are hard to make. Sometimes we'll work on a case as much as eight, 10 months, sometimes a year before we can actually bring it to fruition. And we are not 911, most of your task forces. We're literally people who go undercover and build those hardcore cases. I also have a Thursday morning show that I do. I did it this morning. By the way, both shows this week are on the same topic. This goes out on the World Wide Web at Voice America Variety Channel, and it goes to 170 countries. Why I'm sharing that with you is when you walk away tonight, you'll have the knowledge that you have acquired after I've talked tonight, but you cannot stop there. I literally have more than 110 hours of free, absolutely free, human trafficking and training available to you at exploitedcrimes.com. Every Thursday, I analyze some other aspect of human trafficking, sextortion, social media exploitation, and child pornography. And those are all available. You can download them, you can share them. For, the, for both my local show and the global show, I talked about massage parlors. Imagine that just because Robert Kraft was caught in one. Why should we talk about that? But I thought it was a great subject to take on because you, the public, may not understand how all of that works. Now, I kind of like Mr. Kraft, and I've always suspected that he's very, very successful and a nice man. And I'm not here to judge his activity, mainly because he has a bank of attorneys that are telling me that he's pleading not guilty, and he has more money than I am, so I accept his not guilty plea until proven differently. Having said that, here is a man who was found inside a ring of pro uh, massage partners that are being connected and had already been under investigation for several months for human trafficking. He had really terrible taste, quite frankly, with a man with his amount of money. I expected more out of him. But it's an interesting thing. When you found out what he walked into, more than 163 people have been arrested, connected to a string of 10 massage parlors. The reason that's so important is he walked into one massage parlor. He said, I'm an adult, and she's an adult, and this is consensual sex. And if I want to give her a little tip, that's my business. That's one way to look at it, until you start to find out the girls that he was engaging in. These are girls who have been brought in from China. 
They're never allowed to leave. They came in legally. They thought they were going to work and go to school and be legitimate. And none of them ever thought they would be trapped day in, day out, and never get out of there. Servicing 7, 8, 10, 15 men a day in there. And they don't get the money. And they're threatening their family back home. But here's what I want our men to know that are in that, that massage parlor. When you go on a massage parlor like that, you're exposing your family to the Chinese cartel. Because that is who is doing it. I shared on this show today, many of these massage parlors, the one that found out of, that was ran out of San Gabriel, covered all of Southern California. They had 50 bank accounts in nine different institutions. And they were making so much money that they were buying and selling real estate to launder that out of San Gabriel. So why do I do? I train realtors. They need to get it. They need to understand if you're turning over real estate like that, that there's some funny money going on there. So it's all about educating you. Well, I'm really off to a slow start, so i got to get going here. A couple more legal things, and then we'll move on. I am the training and outreach coordinator for just an amazing group of men and women. My privilege to serve with these people. We lovingly pronounce that word our cat, unless you're dyslexic, and then you can call it ratchet. And I am partially funded by the Department of Justice, and they want a disclaimer to let you know they're not responsible for my attitude. So there you go. <laughs> We've covered all the legal stuff. How many of you saw the movie Taken? Anybody? I'm waiting for Taken 13 to come out. Okay, that movie makes you think they come along and kidnap you off the street. It can happen, and we do need to continue to warn about our kids. But what you will find is that most of our cases, it's a crime of psychology. I have always been amazed as I have sat with, and the reason I've shared with you the fact that I work with real cases is everything I'm going to share with you is about real reality, real cases. And I have always realized that none of those kids understood the path they were about to go down. And so I say to myself, if it's a crime of psychology, can I educate against it? And I have dedicated my life to doing that. I just did 600 out in the worst parts of Paris yesterday. And those kids, listen, I'll tell you, if you talk turkey to kids, they'll listen. We're going to do that in your high school again tomorrow. So it's a crime of psychology. So let me share with you about a case. I had a man, he lived in Nuevo, and he had bought my book. All these books are for sale out there. He had bought Seduce, the Grooming of America's Teenagers. He had a 12-year-old daughter, and this daughter is on kick and a miggle. Now, that's last year model. Nobody's going to agree to be on kick and a miggle if you're over 12 this year. But last year, everybody was on kick, and she's 12. Think about what that means. She's just a little hormonal, okay? She doesn't have adult reasoning, and she's on the World Wide Web, meeting people she wants to meet and hooking up. And Dad read this book and found out how that works and goes, oh my God, what are we doing here? Honey, I really don't want you on there. <laughs> well, instead of cooperating, she got mad. And in the middle of the night, she snuck out her bedroom window. Now this guy lives out in Nuevo, it's really horse country, it's pretty wild out there. And this guy's a cowboy, I quite like him. And he said, I woke up, I heard her window shut, I raced down there, and sure enough, she's gone. He said, I opened the door, she's not there, I didn't even dress, I just jumped in my car. He said, I backed out my car, I looked down the street, and there's my 12-year-old daughter getting in the car with a total stranger at 3 o'clock in the morning. He said, I just went stark raving bananas. I raced down there, I grabbed that door open, I pulled that guy out, and I knocked him out unconscious. And there he is. Hallelujah. Proud of you, Dad. <laughs> then we all went on TV. So, it was interesting. Here's what's interesting. This girl believes she's getting in a car with a guy who's 16 from San Diego. This guy's 27 and he's a registered sex offender. Ten seconds later in her life, and I really want you to hear this part, the life of her whole family, her father and her mother, would have changed forever. But what's important is that man did not drive up there and break into that house and go in and kidnap her. No. He got her to send him a text saying, hey, my dad's putting heat on me, come get me. He got her to crawl out a bedroom window, and he got her to walk three blocks down the street and get in the car with a total stranger at three o'clock in the morning when she'd normally be terrified it's so dark out there. That's what I mean by a crime of psychology. 
And so that is why we must educate you as parents and we must educate the kids. And it's equal, I'm gonna tell you that. When we get to the second section, you're gonna find out just how little you understand about the real live life of the World Wide Web. So, literally, human trafficking is the fastest growing crime in America. California is by far the number one state, and most of our victims are U.S. kids, which is why I do that. It is mostly in our area, gangs and social media, and gangs using social media. Now, I'm not gonna prey a lot on gangs because of the fact that you're up here in the mountain, but I do know gang members come up here. But more important, the fact that gangs are using social media makes all of your kids still vulnerable, so I don't want to leave it behind. 90% of our cases have a gang nexus into them. For nearly four years now, gangs have been making more money selling kids and selling young people in through commercial sex than they have been in selling guns and drugs. It's simple mathematics. If you're going to sell a gun or a drug, you have to keep go getting more and make a delivery. If you're going to sell bodies, you can use that body over and over and over. And if you're picked up with a gun load of drug, excuse me, a truckload of guns, <laughs> I love it. If you pick up a truckload of guns, you're going to go to prison. But if you're picked up with a van load of girls, it's a party. And that is the mathematics on top of it. I'm sure your officers here will tell you, gangs are changing. It isn't necessarily blood in, blood out. You're not seeing them all stand around on the street corner so much with their baggy pants and their jeans. They have social media. They move quietly. They now use things like Tinder and Meet Me and Plenty of Fish and My Laugh Out Loud and those dating sites and some of those chat rooms that get in there like Chat Roulette and Kick instant messaging and even online gaming sites. So that's why we're gonna concentrate on it. But you need to understand, just because you're in a remote area, that happens to be quite beautiful, by the way, but that does not mean your child cannot be reached. It is all about the money. In our area, your average pimp will have a minimum of four girls, excuse me, five girls. We just had a case last year where there were 28 girls. Each girl will earn about $300,000 a year. If there are young people listening tonight, I need you to hear this line real clear. The victim almost never gets the money. They might get part of it, they might get a little bit of it, but it is all about making money for gangs and for pimps and for cartels. If you have five girls making $300,000 a year, each pimp is worth 1.5 million bucks. That is why it's the fastest growing crime. I wanted to throw this in here. I showed this at many of our high schools across the Inland Empire. Why do I show this? Because I've never met a kid yet that understood what was about to happen to them. All too often you'll get a girl, and by the way, more girls are trafficked than boys, but more boys are violated through sex extortion, so you're not gonna get off easy, we'll cover it. But think about this, you're 15 years old and you're dating a gang guy. You really like tats and he's kind of cool. He's kind of powerful and you're falling in love with this guy. And in your mind, that's your boyfriend and you're his girlfriend. But it doesn't work that way with gangs anymore. It's all about the money and loyalty to making money for your gang and for cartels. What will happen is you're 15 years old, you're dating this guy and one day he delivers you to a gang. He will stand there while that entire gang runs a train on you. I'm not going to get graphic, use your imagination. And he will watch as he walks away and you belong to a gang. And so people come to me and they go, well, why doesn't she get out? Because they break her. I'll show that in a minute. They will change her. They lock her in a closet for days so she can't go to the bathroom. They drug them. They burn them. They burn them with cigarettes. If you're a medical person, watch for cigarette burns. Watch for hot irons. Watch for strangulation. Watch for ligature marks. They will rape you over and over and film that and then force you to watch it so that your soul is broken. You are no longer that person and then they begin to drug you. And so you are changed. This is why we and kids exist. Never again should man, woman, or child ever endure that kind of exploitation. And what will happen is you will be broken and he walks away and he goes out to get another girl for the gang. But it ain't over. You belong to the gang now. And you're being controlled by guns just like this. By the way, great job, San Bernardino law enforcement for getting this. 
This is the Verdugo gang, right here is my area. This is San Jacinto, a little sleepy town, with lots of mobile homes out there, and grandmas. And they went out there with 400 officers at 4 a.m. Must have scared grandma to get death, quite frankly. But they took out of there 47 of the syringes of Mexican Mafia. Here is Paris, Paris and Rialto, by the way, in there. Him at Paris and Rialto, $1.42 million in drug money. Sinaloa cartel, does that sound familiar? What I want you to see is they are here, they live amongst us, and they want to make money off our children. We must take control and understand and educate our children because our children don't believe it's going to happen to them. This is how it happened up in Fresno. This is the Dog Pound Gang, mostly guys 16 to 23. And what did they do? They went out and they preyed on foster, homeless, runaway, and pregnant kids. Kids at risk, kids without a father. By the way, thank you to all the men who come tonight. We will talk about how that works because you are a key in making a difference in human trafficking. They went in and they did this on Facebook and they recruited all these kids and they thought they were gonna date like on Plenty of Fish and Tinder and Meet Me. And what happened is, is they took these kids and they broke them. They thought they were dating a guy and the next thing you know, they had a quota and they're out turning tricks. And they are making so much money off of doing this to foster kids in Fresno. They were making $30,000 a week. Hello? And when they picked them up, all that money is going right back to the game. You don't think this is lucrative of literally exploiting young people? They picked them up, they had $50,000 in cash. They had a Bentley, a Range Rover, a party bus, and a boat. By the way, congratulations to law enforcement. They weren't taking this laying down. Somebody missed Thanksgiving as they did more than 5,000 intercepted phone calls. That tells you the reason this was happening is all of this was being controlled by prison. I so much appreciate your assemblyman today talking about this Proposition 57 and how we must stop that revolving door of, of literally sex crimes and allowing them to go back out. My first question when I heard that is what about the girls who testify? They're coming right back if we don't stop that. So, and this one is uh, Grossman High. I share it. We've had these cases in Riverside, but I share this because it's out of my area. But I want you to see. This is the Tycoon Gang. They're a bunch of Crips. And what they did is they used their gang girls and gang guys. I really need moms and dads to hear this. 60% of our cases in Riverside County involve recruitment by another girl for another girl. That is called the bottom girl. That isn't what we call her, but I don't, call, I don't talk like what we really call her out on the street. So we'll call her bottom girl. This is a girl who started in the life, the average life in, in the Inland Empire for getting into prostitution is between 12 and 14. And so she probably started at 13, 14, 15, and now she's 16 or 17. And what is happening is they promote her. And her job is to handle the money, place the ads, show the other girls how to have sex. You're not born with that kind of knowledge. And literally in there, discipline the girls. But here's the big thing, they recruit. Because this girl has a quota herself. So she's either gonna earn it herself or she's gonna go out and recruit some of our kids to earn it. And so that's what they were doing in this case. They were pretending to make a rap video. Who doesn't wanna be rich and famous when you're 14, right? And these kids never had a clue what they were doing. And they got involved, there 94 girls and six guys. And what happened in there is that this gang joined forces with other gangs. What I want you to see is in some cases, the gangs will get into sex trafficking wars. We have some of that out in Moreno Valley and even San Jacinto. And in other cases, gangs join forces together because it's about making money for the cartel. You see, it's all about the money is how this works, and it changes everything. In this case, they literally, each gang had a very different assignment. This is RICO, this is organized crime. They didn't cross over. What was fascinating is they brought out 100 kids, 94 girls, six guys. One kid was only 12 years old. One of them would move them, one would buy the motels, one would place the ads, one would provide the drugs, and one of them would break them. This is what I was talking about earlier. These kids were broken. 
Why is that important? Some of you will be jurors one day, and we'll have one of these cases go into court. And some guy in the courtroom will say, you know, this girl's alone in a motel room with a guy. Why doesn't she ask for help? Well, I haven't found many Johns who really care, number one. But number two, she's been broken, absolutely broken. If you are being controlled, if you're being forced into sex 15 times a night and controlled by guns like that, you are not going to ask for help because you think you're going to die. Every one of these kids in this case were tattooed with a barcode. It's about being branded and literally being a product with a price. So what do you watch for? Watch for crowns. Now, not every guy who wears a crown is a pimp. I get that. You can have a crown like in the name of Jesus. I get that. But many pimps wear crowns. And many girls wear crowns with their pimp's name on it. It is called being branded. Once you are owned, you do not own your own body. We had a case out of Long Beach. I work heavily with the Long Beach Task Force, and I love them to death. They're good people. And we had a case down there where they had a girl who was wired day and night uh, out in the street. And what happened is that her pimp was in New York, and she had to take a leak. He wouldn't let her. She's like, i got to go. i really got to go. And he's like, no, I'll tell you when you can go. You do not own your body. And one day, and one time, she finally had to go, and he heard her. When he got home, he beat her nearly to death. It is about being branded and being owned. This girl could be singing in a church choir if you weren't literally looking at that thing on her neck. Watch out for diamonds or diamonds with lights on them and diamonds with their name on them. If it's on a girl, she belongs to that pimp and cash rules everything around me. So the most likely targets are foster kids, homeless, runaway, and pregnant teenagers. So I want to back up and slow down a minute because this is important. Literally, 60% of kids in prostitution come from foster care. They need your help. I was at a foster place last night. I, every chance I get, I go in and I support law enforcement. I go to El Monte. I go to everywhere I can for kids who have been arrested and their parents and to be able to talk about this. And we talk about it to any foster or runaway kind of program that we can. Why is this happening? Think about what happens for our runaway kid. Uh, for the young people here, don't run away. I mean, I get, when I go into schools, we talk about this. I get life gets tough. I was thinking about running away about five o'clock this morning, if you want to know the truth. You know, there are days you want to just get out of there. Get a plan B. Have somebody safe you can go to. Because once you go out there, if, you're, if you follow me on Facebook, you will see case after case after case where she was a runaway. She left home and she didn't have any resources and this guy comes along and he's like, baby, I'm gonna take care of you, I'll be your daddy. You know, and I put her next to another girl and that girl says, hey, I made 500 bucks last night, so can you. And our little girl goes, oh my God, I don't wanna do that. You know, but it's, it's 500 bucks, it'll last me all month. And it's only one night and then the rest is history. We must talk to our kids in advance about don't run away. Pregnant teenagers, this is absolutely huge. They get them pregnant for the purpose of holding them prison for the rest of their life. And think about what it means when your pimp is your baby's daddy. You want a daddy for your baby, but this daddy is violating you every night. We see mothers up in motel rooms and the kids are down in the, in the car waiting for her to come back with enough money. Only then he cuts in and takes that money. I want to go back to foster kids. This has been a real mission for me, quite frankly. I want to stop and share with you the only difference between you, me, and a foster kid. I got somebody who believed in me. I had somebody who thought I was the greatest thing since sliced bread. I admit I ticked her off regularly, but she never threw me out, thank God, you know. But a foster kid does not have that. They do not have an anchor relationship. They do not have an anchor identity. They are moved about at the whim of whatever else is going on by other adults in their life. And if you are a girl who does not have a male figure in your life, you are a sex trafficking likely victim. So I want to address for the men here tonight. I feel like this is the most important thing of all my mission. 
Now this is as sexist as it gets, so you can throw me out, I don't care. But I'm gonna tell you that you men are the key to stopping human trafficking. And I mean that with all my heart. Certainly you women are making a difference and leading the way on this fight, but you men are the key. And I'll tell you how. Certainly don't be a sex buyer, that's a given, we don't have to go there. But if you will be a strong, moral male with good boundaries, and the key's boundaries, because these girls don't have any. Be a strong, moral male with good boundaries, and you learn four words. Four words. I believe in you. And you go home tonight, and you practice 15 ways to say, I believe in you, to all the women in your life. I am told it works quite well with the wife, by the way. But anyway, I believe in you. 15 different ways to say that. Think what a pimp is selling a foster kid. I believe in you, baby. I'm going to be there for you. I'll be your daddy. I'm going to take care of you. Let me tell you how I learned this. This is very personal. 23 months ago, my husband passed away. He was the love of my life. We were together 44 years. I was one of those lucky, lucky women. He was an amazing man. And we were true partners in every sense of the word. And what happened is, is he got kidney cancer. He even came to Cambodia twice on dialysis, believe it or not, to support my work. But as he got kidney cancer and I was losing him, he and I talked about, what do I do? Am I going to be missing him? And should I stay home those months while he's gone, while I'm losing him? And he said, absolutely not, Opal. I need to know when I am gone, you are out there doing this. You keep going. And he went with me many times when he probably was way too sick to do that. But one night I came home, 9, 10 o'clock at night. I do this often, late at night. And he had made a sign for me. For you men, you don't have to buy $100 worth of roses. This cost him nothing. And it said to the most beautiful, most intelligent, hardest working woman in the world, Love Dell. And he put it in a little plexus glass stand, and I, you might imagine that thing is never more than five inches from my keyboard. 23 months have gone by, and they have been the hardest days of my life. But I look at that sign, and one day, God spoke to me. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that here, but anyway. Spoke to me. And I realized that that man was finding, looking for a way that when he was gone, I knew he still believed in me. And I said, how do I put that in a can to a foster kid so they don't have to trade their body for love? And I tell you what we did, we made bracelets. Simple little things, says me and kids, I believe in you. And we sell them out there, they're a buck a piece, and for every one we sell, we give one to a foster kid. And it is changing lives that you cannot believe. We have social workers that you can order them online too. We have social workers that buy them by the dozens and give them to all their kids as they're moving them from place to place. I had a girl up in Morro Bay, I love the DA up there, and his wife, let me make that clear. Anyway, they're great people, but they're wonderful people. But he, he had a girl up there that had been moved. And the social worker told her about a man who loved a woman and gave her a bracelet. And the next morning they called back and said, what do you think, how's she doing? And he said, something about a man who loves a woman and, and uh, a bracelet. And she said, you know, this, this social worker said she believed in me. And she said, everybody else thinks I'm stupid. You can change your life. Doesn't cost you anything, cost you a buck if you buy a bracelet. But other than that, it costs you nothing. So we're coming up, and let's see how I'm doing here on time. I'm gonna slow this thing down and we'll start to close up. We have a law in California that says if you're under 18, that you are automatically a victim, even if you're out there willingly. And so what happens there is if you're in commercial sex, that term is called CSEC, you are a victim, and there are some amazing victim service providers. We are looking for people that we can assist to. In our area, we have six uh, safe houses. You have open door here, and you have some here on the mountain, and so we have victim services. If you're over 18, that does not make you less of a victim, but it depends on whether or not you have force, fraud, or coercion. 
You can't be an independent provider. That's what I talked about, about massage parlors. Certainly you can choose. It's your eight, you're 18, it's your body. You want to sell it, it's up to you. I will tell you it's harder and harder to do though. It's kind of like going over to Compton and standing on a street corner and selling a bag of weed. That's going to last about five minutes and somebody's going to say, this is my corner, choose up. And so it's getting more and more difficult to be independent. And yes, they all claim to be independent on the ads. I'm sure that Mr. Kraft would have told you that the young lady he was going to go see was independent. Unfortunately, she had a quota. She was never allowed to leave, and she never got the money. So if you have forced fraud or coercion, you are a victim of human trafficking, even if you're an adult. Force is you're not free to go. If you start in Moreno Valley, they will break you, like we talked about. They'll put you in a motel. They'll move you from Moreno Valley over to San Bernardino because they think they're going to trick us guys because they're crossing county lines. Then they'll go over to Ontario and El Monte and Garden Grove and Los Angeles and Long Beach going down to Oceanside. You are locked in motel rooms. They are advertising you on the internet. You do not know what town you're in and you often don't know what name you're being sold under. You are not free to go. I'm going to show you a couple of those ads in a minute. Coercion. If you don't do this, you're not going to eat. If you see kids that are very hungry and very sleepy, they will keep you from eating so that you will make your quota. You go two or three days without food, you get real compliant. And they will work you 20 hours a day. The other one is watch for burner phones, these throwaway phones. If you have somebody who comes home in your life and they have a prepaid phone and you didn't buy it, oh boy, ask some questions. They have two of them. I'd get right in there and start going through that phone. And I might even sit down with your local school resource officer or your law enforcement. If you ever see daddy or wifey or wifey-in-law on that phone, you got a deal. Go directly to the police. That is called uh, coercion is a threat. You're going to do this or you're not going to eat. If you have Hispanic people, this is an ethnic uh, address, I get that. Different ethnicities traffic differently. 85% of Mexicans in Southern California have family on both sides of the border. I just showed you the cartel is here and the cartel's there. They will tell these kids you're going to do this or I'm going to kill your nana back home and they know they can, they will. That is coercion. If you ever hear, I must do this or they'll hurt my family, please believe them. The biggest one of all is fraud. Fraud is you want to be a model, you want to be a makeup artist, you want to be in commercials, you want to be in rap music, you want to pick up 500 bucks and sometimes fraud looks like I love you because it's a boyfriend. I show this slide to every high school person that I can. I want them to get that you will earn the money, but you won't get to keep that money. Think about our kids, pimp daddy, pimp my ride, Halloween, we're pimping and hoeing everything. You know, our kids don't take this seriously. You will earn that money, you will just never see that money. Well, I couldn't resist throwing this out. Who knows this movie? Okay, this is Pretty Woman. If you think I'm gonna trash your movie, you're right. I love this movie. Julia Roberts did a great job in this movie, but think about what a crock this movie is. Julia Roberts, I saw this movie, she made love. This ain't the weirdo kinky stuff our guys are buying, okay? She made love to Richard Gere for 3,000 bucks, and the next thing you know, she's shopping on Rodeo Drive, and he marries her. Sign me up, baby. What a fight for you. I tell our kids the first problem you got is you're in Riverside, and nobody pays three grand for anything out there. You know? Even worse is not Richard Gere. I've seen them, and they're not even close. But what I want them to get is you're not going to make love. Especially if you're a foster kid, you're going to think, if I'm really good in bed, one of these guys will marry me. It worked for her. It doesn't work in reality. Now, Backpage no longer exists, but this is internet advertising of sex ads. And now that they have been shut down, they are literally like 45, 50 different ones of these. But I want to continue to show it to you so you can see what this looks like. Now these ads have body parts on them, but I speak in churches, so we don't show that. And I don't want anybody having a pornography addiction, so I don't show that. But I would work these with my team. That's part of what I do with my undercover. By the way, being kids, a lot of what we do is give our team uh, gift cards so that they can buy things to help the girl get off the street. And we fund reverse stings and those ads and those Bitcoin accounts. And you may want to talk to your law enforcement about funding some of them locally because they have money for law enforcement, but they don't have fun funding for the residual. 
But what would happen on here is that I would go on and I'd watch these ads every day and alert my crime analysts what to watch for. We're looking for a body without heads because it's probably only 16 years old. We're looking for lines like, I'll do what others won't do. As nasty as it gets, I love, I love fetishes. You know, why? Because that pimp doesn't care what that girl is going to have to endure as long as he gets extra bucks. So we get a hold of the team and go, this one looks scary. We need to maybe intervene and give that one priority. So here's uh, some girls that were for sale in Riverside one night when I made these slides. I actually, this was Fresno when I was up there, but I left it in there. I want you to see this is real. Look how young Alyssa is in Fresno for sale for sex. This is Harley. She's, I said she's 20, I think she's 17. Here's April, I think she's probably more like 15. Here's uh, uh, Brooklyn, I was training the Santa Maria task force, and Brooklyn was for sale that night in Santa Maria. This is Brooklyn for sale in Riverside the night I made this slide. I was helping a parent, and I often help parents look for their missing kid, and I found leaving Temecula soon was leaving Long Beach soon and leaving Sacramento soon. She is, uh, she is, uh, Crystal in Sacramento, she's Kimmy in Long Beach, or excuse me, in uh, Temecula. Guys get into this too, but it's only about one to five. Guys do not have pimps, they have chicken hawks and sugar daddies. It is about couch surfing. Do me a favor, do not throw your children out on the street no matter how much conflict is going on. Because you get a young man that has no place to stay, and I'll show you a man who's vulnerable to this. Here is Benny. He's just like the girls, but he's not 18 because he's young and fresh. But he is being sold on the same circuit as the girls were. This is also true of the LBGT community. They are highly, highly violated in there. Watch out for Grinder. These guys will go on the Grinder account and set up a date for a sex buyer for the sole purpose of beating him up and robbing him. Grinder is a huge one. If you think this is a big, just Red Boy has a half a million entries a day in there. I'm running a little bit late, so I'm going to skip the story of David Yoder. This is a young lady that has been provided to us by Polaris Foundation, one of the big people who combat sex trafficking. This is all the same young lady. She's 15. She was picked up eight times over the course of one year. You will only live about seven years. You get SI, HIV, excuse me, you get STDs, HIV, you get hepatitis, you get drug-related diseases, and you get horrible abortions. I show this in our high schools. I want our kids to understand that pretty woman starts out like this pretty woman. The pretty woman does not end up like that. We must overcome the denial to our children. I understand this is heavy duty stuff I've just laid on you, that it's quite traumatizing. And I will tell you that if it hits you wrong, if it affects something in your family, you know, if you, if you feel the need to talk to somebody, we do have people here that you can talk to about that. But what I want you to see is exactly how real this is. It's in our community. And in your community, it's mainly going to take place because of social media. So I'm a little bit over, but I'm going to tell you one quick story, and then we will break. I wrote this book, it's for sale out there. I never intended to write this book. I never wanted to be an author. I'm always kind of amazed by it. It's a uh, five-star book on Amazon with 50 people I never paid off. Uh, forget my faith, but I'm going to tell you that God wrote that book, and I typed it because I don't have a clue what I'm doing. But it has sold tens of thousands, and it's reading for parents, parents and counselors and teachers and like that. The book is all about how total strangers, because of social media, can access, groom, recruit, and exploit our young people. It is all about, literally, how total strangers now can come into your home and talk to your child about morality and spirituality and sexuality and things that were the holy grail for a parent. So this is my last slide, and I will close, and we will take a break here and, and uh, have the mayor come back up. This is a true story, and it's in both books. I tell it to every school that I can tell, and I ask your kids to tell me how I knew this is a bad guy. This is a true story. The mother is a high-powered executive, extremely successful in L.A. 
The daughter is 18 years old. She is a full boat scholarship to go to college. This is May 1st that this case started, and she, this is, she was going to graduate June 15th, six weeks away. A full boat scholarship. You don't get any smarter than this girl or any brighter or any, any more uh, successful. She had her own car. She had a, a, a job. She did not have a dad. And what happened is I got this phone call. I was up in Sacramento afterwards, and I remember it. Mom's panicked. She said, I went home and told my daughter on a Friday afternoon what happened, what you said. And to my amazement, this girl began to cry, and she went to her bedroom, and she came back with a passport and an airline ticket to Ireland. She, I just freaked. This is Friday afternoon. That ticket is for Sunday morning. And mom, she told her mom, I wasn't going to tell you till I got there because I didn't want you to stop me. Mom told me I never had a suspicion. Never once. She said, you know, I, I, I knew she was playing internet, uh, Xbox with a guy in Ireland, but this girl's brilliant. And I'm thinking this is a pin pad. The girl herself, even though she's very, very smart, did not realize. He had convinced her to quit her job. She quit school six weeks from graduating with a full boat scholarship. Then we got her back in, by the way. She literally uh, bought, raised $2,000 and bought an airline ticket to Ireland. And she's 18 and she got her own passport and never told mom. And so mom said to me, what do I do? I get these calls all the time. They're fun. Oh, yeah. What do we do? You know? I said, I want you to do this after a lot of thought. I want you to tell this girl, if you love this girl, I'm going to, excuse me, if you love this guy, I'm going to love him. If you think he's terrific, our whole family's going to like him. So let's do this. Let's cash in your airline ticket. I'm going to raise some money and I'll buy him an airline ticket and we'll bring him over here so he can be part of our family. Now tell me everything you know about him. Why did I do that? When you meet a pedophile on the internet, they give you this much information, even over nine months. If you date somebody for nine months, you're going to know all about them. If you know them nine months on the internet, you're going to know beans. Nothing. And so what has happened is she has formed a fantasy relationship. And that is the key to grooming and what seduced is all about. Because what is happening if mom has said to her over my dead body, you're not going to Ireland, this girl, if she can raise two grand and get a passport, she knows how to get on an airplane. You see, what had happened is she had developed this fantasy If mom was not arguing with her, and mom's not arguing with a boyfriend, mom is arguing with the fantasy. When a parent gets in a tug of war with a fantasy, you are going to lose. Even the officers are, learned, are taught in interrogation how to help them often unpack a fantasy, and that is what is going on. What is really, really important for the girl is tell me everything about him. You know, think about this. Is he like one of these tall, blonde, Irish guys? Or is he more like a hunky Italian? You know, if he's going to be my son-in-law, I want to know about him. Is he into sports or is he kind of more of an intellectual? Is he funny? Does he like opera or theater? Or is he, you know, does he drive a sports car or an SUV or a van or... A motorcycle. You know, a meat or one of those funny bacon people, you know? Ask questions and don't be a drill sergeant. Help her unpack her fantasy. She will not know. She absolutely will not know. And that is the key to grooming and the key to helping people begin to let go because what they believe in is not real. And you can argue to your blue in the face and they will not believe you because it is their fantasy and they're gonna hang on to it. So uh, the mayor uh, wanna come up or how we handle our break. We're gonna take a break. The books are for sale out there. Uh, and I will next uh, start with the next book. Thank you. Thank you, Opal. <laughs> uh, thank you for what you shared with us so far. We're not done. Uh, we're at halftime right now. We're gonna take a brief 10 minute break. Uh, you're welcome to go out into the lobby. Um, you can visit the exhibit tables, help yourself to some uh, refreshments, and then we'll flash the lights so we'll come back in here for the second half. Thank you.